Hi folks, Fusion 360 undercutting. How can we program in CAM this undercut with a ball or lollipop style end mill? Welcome to another Fusion Friday. You are going to want to use 3D contour. That's the operation in Fusion 360 that's able to recognize and program off of undercuts. We'll pick our tool. I've got a sort of lollipop style or an undercut or relieved shank ball end mill. Click OK. Now, normally with 3D operations, I like to just pick my tool and click OK, and I like to see what Fusion comes up with. We don't get anything here, and the reason is that the geometry right now, the tool containment is tool center on boundary. If you look at this part from a top-down or projected view, right now the center of that tool is only allowed to go to the extent of our part. So if it's never, not allowed to go outside of that, you can see why it can't reach down to get inside of here. We can quickly check this by switching it to tool outside boundary, click OK. And now, not only are we going to get a toolpath, but we're actually going to get a toolpath that proves this will work. I'll hit simulate. If you left click and hold your mouse on the green timeline at the bottom, you can scrub forward. It's one of my favorite tricks. So I'll scrub forward to, say, here, hit play. And sure enough, we'll speed it up a little. You can see it's working. It's walking down and recognizing that undercut nature. Problem is, this is not the toolpath we'd actually run a run because this is cutting our whole part. How do we limit it to just this face? Right click, edit, under geometry, avoid touch surfaces. Check that. I'm going to pick that face and then check the touch surfaces box. Click OK. Good news and bad news. Good news is this kind of works. Bad news is it runs it all the way down the face. And I actually don't know whether that's a glitch or, uh, or whether that's something I'm doing wrong. So how do we limit it to just that face? Right click, edit, heights, bottom height. Instead of being model bottom, pick selection. And I'm going to pick that line. So the, now the good news is the tool can't go below that line. But we've got a problem, which is that we go to the very end, the tool isn't done cutting. It's not dipping below this line right here, but the tool isn't done. I've got to have it come down a little bit further because of the radius nature of it. The other thing that's really bothering me right now is I can see all these little black dots. So let's fix that too. Really good practice under passes. We'll add smoothing. And we've got a t tolerance of four ten thousandths of an inch. I'll make this say just one thousandth of an inch. And that's going to help us get rid of those, all those little unnecessary black dots and give us actually a better, smoother toolpath. Look at that. Much nicer. Okay. So now let's drop that toolpath lower, but let's do it the smart way. Go to Google, type NYC CNC Fusion Expressions. This is a list, courtesy of Rob Lockwood and others, of all of the cool formulas that we can reference in Fusion 360 CAM, we've taken the liberty of adding some of the most common ones to the top. What I want here is tool corner radius. One of the reasons I like to copy and paste these is they're very strange spelling and they are case sensitive. In this case, the R is capital R. I think that's a relic from one of the programming languages, maybe Python or something, I can't remember. Anyway, right click, edit, height, Bottom height will be offset by negative, and then Control-V to paste in that corner radius value. Click OK. Close, but not quite. We simulate now. It's dropping it down by the tool radius, but because of the nature of this tool, we actually need half the radius. So I'm going to go back, edit, heights. Now, it looks like this is a hard-coded value of the negative 0.1875, but it's not a hard-coded value, so I don't want to edit it here. I want to right click and say edit expression. And there's that same thing we typed in. And now I'm going to say that divided by two to give half of it. Click OK. And now if we click on the very last point, we can see we're good. Now there's some limitations to the graphics, which is why you're seeing that gap there. But this gives us the right toolpath. 
It's also worth noting, normally this sort of thing is something accomplished by contact point boundary. We have, haven't got it working here, so either, again, that's a fusion glitch or capability issue or we're doing something wrong. But that's one of the things I love about fusion and just this general attitude towards making and machining is you've got to be creative, you've got to figure it out. Sometimes you've got to hack the software. Speaking of which, there's one thing I really don't like about this, which is if I were going to make this part, I really don't like this toolpath, to be honest. I really don't care for the tool to come in uh, the side like that. It just kind of bothers me. Um, see how it kind of wrapping around the edge there? Uh, it, would it work? In theory, it should, but let's make it better. And to do that, and this is a super common thing I found with some of the 3D operations as well as undercutting cam, we're going to go into patch. Now, this is really difficult, so pay attention. Create. Offset. Click here, and you're done. Click OK. Actually, we're not done. We're going to modify it really quick. But what I want to show and emphasize is that it, we now have this body two. I'm going to un. I'm going to turn off the light bulb for our undercut, which is the whole solid model. So now we can just see this thing. So what is patch? If you want to see some other really good videos, go to the Fusion 360 patch tutorials videos that we've got card here to that. Super, super useful. You will absolutely use the patch tool when you're doing and really, really dial it in tool pass and cam. What I need to do now is I want to extend that over to the left and to the right. So I'll turn my light bulb off again, modify, extend. Now I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and that's going to let me click the right edge and the left edge at the same time. And we'll say 0 0.125, click OK. And if we turn our solid model back on, what you can see is that's just extended that surface a little bit on the left and on the right. Head back into cam. Edit our 2D contour. Under geometry, now this is really important. We're actually not going to change our selection of avoid touch face, but what we're going to do is we're going to check model and we're going to add a model surface of that patch that we just created. Now it happens to be easy to pick or select here because it extends beyond the model. But if you're ever having troubles, just turn off the light bulb for your solid model that reveals the patch and only the patch. Now you can click that and turn your solid model back on. I say that to be very deliberate and very careful because it can become frustrating if you accidentally pick the wrong thing. So click OK take a look. So why did that work? Well, the reason that that worked is we're still telling Fusion, I want you to touch, I want you to do work on the solid model face that we originally selected, this guy right here. But what I did was I added something into the model. And what that does is it makes Fusion think, okay, there's something else that I've got to be aware of. And because the 3D toolpaths are model aware, they're not going to violate your solid model. They're not going to machine into them. They're not going to gouge them. So by adding that piece, in fact, all we would have really needed to add was the extension on each side. But rather than do two separate extensions, it's sometimes easier just to do one solid bar like this. So now Fusion sees, okay, I need to machine the same toolpath, but I'm not allowed to kind of machine through or crash through this. And what that does is it creates this toolpath that now doesn't wrap around our part. I can turn my body off and you can take a look. In fact, we'll even run a simulation. Just like so, folks. Controlling the surface finish of that is going to be very tool dependent, speeds and feeds, as well as in your passes, the maximum step down. Here it's 40 thousandths of an inch. If we say reduce that to 10 thousandths of an inch, it's going to take longer, but it's going to have a reduced scallop height. For those of you wondering, where do I buy these tools, these end mills that can do this undercutting? Here are three ideas. Number one would be your traditional woodruff or key seat cutter. Not ideal for surfacing because these are square shouldered type tools, but nevertheless relatively inexpensive. And they tend to have a cutting diameter that's significantly larger than the tool diameter, which lends itself to the undercutting nature. 
Another option would be same thing, except one that has a radius. And this you absolutely could do some surfacing with. Just be mindful these tools aren't always zero run out. They may have some run out or wobble, which is going to affect your surface finish. Nevertheless, any sort of radius woodruff or key seat cutter could be another option. And finally, the folks over at Harvey or Helical have proper dedicated undercutting end mills, aka spherical or aka lollipop end mills, which are pretty cool. These are definitely not going to be the super cheap, but again, when you need one, really cool functionality, really cool features can save you a setup and everything that we've had from the folks at Harvey or Helical has been very, very high quality. So this is going to be your answer, if you're, especially if you're trying to do surfacing or use a tool that you've got some really good speeds and feeds recipes. Uh, they've got a really good speeds and feeds calculator that you can download. Folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Again, check out the NYC CNC website for more tutorials on Fusion 360. Take care. See you next Friday.